fair value gaps. They appear everywhere in the market, some hold and some do not hold. So in this video, we will be looking at the ones that do hold and how you can anticipate them. So let's begin first with what exactly is a fair value gap. The fair value gap takes in the form of three candles. One, two, three. The first candle's bottom wick to the third candle's upper wick. When there is a gap between the first candle's bottom wick and the third candle's upper wick, this is where you could draw your box from the first candle's bottom wick to the third candle's upper wick and then draw it out and this is where you have your fair value gap. They're essentially the gap between these two wicks, right? If you look at another example, here, you get the same thing. The first candle's bottom wick, there is a gap between the first candle's bottom wick and the third candle's upper wick. So when you draw it out, that becomes your fair value gap, price comes back, rebalances it, before gives you another break lower. So essentially what a fair value gap is, is as in the name, there is a gap in fair value. When price comes back and rebalances this, this fair value gap, this is where you get what is considered fair valued price action, right? When you had this fair value gap, in this specific scenario, this is a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, you had an imbalance in sell side price action in comparison to buy side. So price has to come back, rebalance this to offer fair value pricing, pairing up the imbalance in sell side here with buy side after price comes back into this fair value gap before it distributes lower. Another way you could think of it is when price extends and it runs out of steam, it always has to rebalance, usually into an old imbalance to accumulate more short position in this bearish scenario before it could distribute lower again and taking out this low, right? So that is basically all a fair value gap is. It is when you have an imbalance in price action, so price has to come back most of the time to rebalance that imbalance in price action, accumulate more orders before distributing it lower because price always wants to move in fair value price action. So now that you have a basic idea of what fair value gap is, this is where we can start to differentiate your low probability and your high probability fair value gaps. Yes, when you have a fair value gap, you could expect it to come back and rebalance it before distributing in its intended direction. But a lot of times, depending on what your higher time frame direction is currently showing you, any opposing fair value gaps that oppose your higher time frame direction, ideally you would want to see get violated, right? For example, yeah, you have a fair value gap, but this time, this is a bullish fair value gap. But it follows the same thing. Your first candle's upper wick and your third candle's bottom wick, when there is a gap between them, aka there's no wick in between these two candles, this is where you could draw out your rectangle and extend it out. That is where you have your bullish fair value gap. But here, we know in hindsight that price reverses from here and disrespects this fair value gap. So once it disrespects this fair value gap, this is where you have your confirmation in a reversal. So any opposing fair value gap to this bearish price action, you would want to see get disrespected, such as here. First candle's upper wick, third candle's bottom wick. Extend out and you can see the price disrespects that fair value gap, right, when it had bearish price action. So that's your first confluence in determining high probability versus low probability fair value gaps. It always has to do with your higher time frame direction. Depending on where your higher time frame direction will go, that would determine which fair value gaps are likely to hold. So if you was in a bullish scenario, obviously bullish fair value gaps or buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiencies are going to stay respected, right? Price retraces into them, rebalances the old inefficiencies, seeks new liquidity, simply the two functions of the price. But when a price has a higher time frame reversal from here, you would expect for these bullish fair value gaps that happened when price was bullish to get disrespected. Price, you want to see trade through those bullish fair value gaps if it was in a higher time frame bearish direction and vice versa. As you was expecting for bullish fair value gaps to stay respected here, here you would expect for bearish fair value gaps or SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiencies to stay respected and continue lower, right? Following the same two functions in price, rebalance old inefficiencies and seek new liquidity. So with that in mind, your high probability fair value gaps will always be framed off of your higher time frame direction. Now with higher time frame directions, there are also higher time frame key levels. If I jump up onto the daily, this is where your top down analysis comes into play. Look at this price action. 
Price is fractal, so the same thing you would expect on the hourly, you would want to see on the daily as well. On the daily, this is clear bullish price action. Discount rates are being respected and premium rates are being disrespected. So when price retraces into a higher time frame fair value gap, which is here, this is where you would anticipate for this higher time frame fair value gap to stay protected and then target for this next draw on liquidity, being your buy side liquidity. Again, your two functions in price, rebalancing old inefficiencies and then seeking new liquidity. However, even though on a daily, this looks very clear to you, right? That this is going to stay respected and this is going to be your next draw on liquidity. When you drop down onto the four hour, it tells you a completely different story. Because here, in order for price, after taking out this higher time frame draw on liquidity, in order for price to come down back into this higher time frame key level, it has to follow a somewhat bearish price action. So with that bearish price action, this is where you could anticipate for any bullish fair value gaps on the four hour to get disrespected until price comes back into this higher time frame key level and shows you willingness to continue higher. Only once it shows you willingness to continue higher, realigning itself on the four hour with the higher time frame, which is our daily bullish direction, is when you will look for bullish fair value gaps to support price higher and take out your higher time frame draws on liquidity. So that's a very key thing to remember. And that is where you can start to anticipate your low probability fair value gaps. And it always has to do with your higher time frame, not only direction, but also your higher time frame key levels. Even though your higher time frame direction is bullish, it can't just keep expanding bullish forever until it hits all your draws on liquidity. It always has to rebalance, rebalance any old inefficiencies, accumulate more long positions in a bullish scenario before continuing higher and seeking new liquidity. So with that in mind, that is where you have your key levels. When price has a key level that you can anticipate for price to retrace back into on your lower time frame in this scenario being the four hour, this is where you could anticipate for low probability fair value gaps to give way if it is opposing your temporary bearish price action in this scenario into your key discount level before it continues higher and realigns with your higher time frame bullish direction. Only then would you look for bullish fair value gaps to stay respected. Right, and you would anticipate for this to be your next draw on liquidity. So, if you look here, that is exactly what you get there. You had this four hour, if you find this, you had this four hour fair value gap. So here, when price comes back into this bullish fair value gap, this low gets taken up. This becomes your market structure shift. It makes it even higher probability that this low, the old low, took out this sell side liquidity. But here you can see that you had a market structure shift, premium arrays are being respected and discount arrays are being disrespected. And that is to be anticipated after we took out this high time frame draw on liquidity. So when it takes out this high time frame draw on liquidity, you are anticipating a retracement. Now, the key question here is, would you be anticipating for this bullish fair value gap on the four hour to hold? No, you wouldn't. Even though it is in your key higher time frame level, price has not shown any willingness to realign bullish from here. So because it hasn't realigned bullish and instead is still giving you heavy bearish price action, you are not anticipating for any opposing fair value gaps that oppose this bearish price action, aka bullish fair value gaps to hold. You anticipate them to give way. This key level, even on the daily, this is a key imbalance level. Here, you still have this bullish order block that price could still come back into. So this key level is only an anticipated key level that you would want to see hold, but that doesn't necessarily mean it will hold. The only thing to confirm that it will hold is when you have a bullish market structure break, bullish market structure shift, or a change in state of delivery. Those are your three reversal patterns. So because it hasn't shown you those three reversal patterns yet, you are just simply following the reactions that the candles have given you. And in this case, that is still a bearish price action, so you would want to see this get disrespected, right? In hindsight, it does get disrespected. Price comes down, takes out this low, and then it has a heavy displacement higher, taking out this high. This is your bullish market structure break, right? When you had this market structure break, that is a confirmed market reversal pattern that you are going to continue higher now. And this is where you realign bullish with your higher time frame bullish array, you would anticipate for this discount rate to stay respected. And this is where you look for four hour bullish fair value gaps 
to stay respected. Any opposing fair value gaps, such as this bearish fair value gap, you would want to see get disrespected now, and it rightfully does so, right? It has a full body closure past it. So here, this is where you would anticipate for bullish fair value gaps to hold, such as this, to support price higher. Right, your two functions in price, seek liquidity and rebalance all efficiencies. So here, you had this buy side liquidity, but this buy side liquidity was in the form of your market structure break, but it is still considered liquidity. So when it takes out this market structure break, you would want to see rebalance of old inefficiencies before it seeks new liquidity. That imbalance stays protected and it has a full body closure again, breaking this liquidity. Discount arrays are being respected, premium arrays are being disrespected. Here, look for the same thing. You have these imbalances left behind. Again, your first candle's upper wick to your third candle's bottom wick. When you have a gap in between them, that is where you have your fair value gap. Price comes into that last fair value gap. It shows respect with just only a wick and a body closure above that fair value gap. And it takes out your overall draw on liquidity. So you see how simple that is? That is the second thing to determining low probability and high probability fair value gaps. Now, the third thing, which brings all of it together, and we have already spoken about it briefly, is your displacement. Here, without displacement off of your higher time frame key levels, then that will set up for low probability fair value gaps. You always want to see displacement, not only to confirm your market reversal, but also when displacement happens, it leaves behind extremely large candles. This is where the majority of times you are going to get your imbalances left behind, which is your fair value gaps, because displacement is essentially a number of imbalances that are left behind. Price aggressively wants to move away from a certain key level, and hence why that displacement leaves behind imbalances. Because in this scenario, when you looked at this market reversal off of this key level, you have your buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency here. There's an imbalance in buy side, right? There's a lack of selling going on here. And instead, it is met with heavy, aggressive buying to move price away from this key level. Hence why this is your key level. So when you have displacement, the imbalances that are formed off your displacement are the ones that are going to be your high probability imbalances. You expect that to retrace back into, respect it before continuing higher. And here, even though this displacement isn't as big as these, you can see that it's still obvious in comparison to your retracement price action. Look at this segment in price. Look at how steady that bearish order flow is in comparison to these two upper candles. Displacement is always extremely clear to the eye. So when you have displacements, the imbalances that happen off of the displacements are more likely going to hold. And those are your high probability imbalances. Not only that, but when you have a draw on liquidity as well, and you have displacement in the direction of that draw on liquidity, that will make this draw on liquidity a magnet. And in this scenario, you could anticipate for bullish price action. So any bearish fair value gaps here should ideally get disrespected and those become your low probability fair value gaps. So, even though the three confluences for determining these high probability fair value gaps sound simple, a lot of you still struggle to identify them because you lack patience. You lack the ability to wait for price to come back into a higher time frame key level and show you market reversal. All right, once price gives you this segment in price here, which happens off of a high time frame key level, in this segment in price, this is where you could start to entertain your trade setups and look for longs. That is where you get the highest probability trades and setups. So like always, let's begin with our top down analysis. Here, if you go into the weekly, it's much more clearer. We are in a bearish high time frame price action, right? On a weekly, this becomes your next immediate draw on liquidity in the form of your sell side liquidity. And on the daily, you can see that we are following through with your bearish price action on the daily as well. You had this market structure shift, Following the same thing that you've done on your lower time frame, you could do on your higher time frame. Seeks liquidity, you would anticipate for price to rebalance any fair value gaps before distributing lower. So you could see that on the daily here, you have this fair value gap. The first candle's bottom wick and your third candle's upper wick. The gap in between them, you would draw it out. Here, playing price out, price comes back into that fair value gap. This is where I would draw down to the 4 hour. And you will look for the same realignment to go bearish from here. The 4 hour now is showing you steady bullish price action into this fair value gap. But look at what you have here. When price came back into this daily fair value gap, 
which is also in line with your 4 hour fair value gap. Price gives you a respect on this fair value gap and a strong displacement lower. So this is your market structure shift off of your key higher time frame premium array level which is in line with your higher time frame bearish direction. So this is your first good sign that price is going to likely reverse from here and continue bearish. If you keep playing price out, it shows you more confluences. You can see here that this is where you had your high probability fair value gap. It is in line with your high time frame direction and key level and it gives you a market structure shift. So this is your high time frame fair value gap. Price comes back, respects that fair value gap. You would anticipate for any opposing fair value gaps to become low probability now because price has realigned on a 4 hour to go bearish so any bullish fair value gaps shouldn't hold. And as you can see it doesn't. It breaks through that, it comes back into the inversion level before it distributes lower. Here, this is where you had your aggressive bearish distribution. If you carry on playing price out, this is where you have your fair value gap with that displacement. So here you could start to look for shorts to go down from here. Because the signs are extremely obvious now that we are in a bearish price action on a 4 hour, respecting this daily and 4 hour bearish fair value gap. So this is your highest probability trades. Your bearish, your higher time frame direction is bearish. Price is respecting key higher time frame premium array levels. On the lower time frame, it gives you a market structure shift and it's realigned with your higher time frame direction. So here I would like to see this stay respected. If I drop down onto the 15 minute, you can see how the bodies of the 15 minute is closing within the 4 hour fair value gap. That is a good sign that this is going to stay respected. To confirm the respect of this 4 hour fair value gap, you would want to see a market reversal, which is exactly what we had here. You had your market structure break with displacement. So with that in mind, what becomes high probability and what becomes low probability now? Bullish fair value gaps becomes low probability, right? These bullish fair value gaps over here and any bearish fair value gaps should become your high probability fair value gaps. So with that in mind, this is where you could start to look for an entry here. You have this fair value gap, entry there, stop loss above there. This could be your immediate drawn liquidity. You could either collapse your entire position here for a nice two hour trade or you could take partials here and then ride it down to your overall draw on liquidity. So let's play price out and see what it does. Taps you in and it gives you a heavy displacement lower. And as you would have guessed, the low probability fair value gaps here are all being disrespected. Continue playing price out. You have this fair value gap or this fair value gap that price could come back into. Because it's clear that you are in a higher time frame bearish direction and your lower time frame realigns with your higher time frame bearish direction, you have your draws on liquidity here and here. And lastly, key premium arrays are being respected on the higher time frame and a lower time frame. And this kind of arrays are being disrespected. You can have confidence here in scaling in. Could probably scale in here, stop loss above this swing high, or for better risk to reward ratio, but a less chance for price to come back into this imbalance. You can enter off of here, stop loss above that swing high, and then target this or this, right? But for now, if we scale in, let's just target the immediate drawn liquidity. Price comes back into that imbalance. You can see how it rebalances that fair value gap to offer fair value price action accumulating more shorts before it distributes lower to this sell side liquidity. So if you had these two positions here, that would have been a nice 2R trade and 1.5 trade rounded, right? So 3.5R in total for a pretty simple trade. And with that in mind, this would be the perfect time to end the video. So that pretty much concludes everything that you need to know on differentiating between your low probability and high probability fair value gaps. If you guys found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below in the comments. Like always, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.